Apple finally wakes up in the AI world. It's still 2023 and one of the complaints that Apple received is that they are not active on AI, especially the generative AI that we are seeing, witnessing a huge growth. Apple is still one of the few companies who have not overused AI in their keynotes, unlike Google and many other companies. AI, 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 AI generative AI, generative AI. But on December 12th, Apple released a new paper, LLM in a flash, that is so viral, it hit the top of Hugging Face Papers, it hit the top of Hacker News, and everybody has been talking about it. And it's not just that. Even before that, Apple released a new framework for array computing, and that framework is called MLX, and that natively runs large language models on Apple Silicon, and there have been a lot of models released on MLX that Hugging Face has created an MLX community where you can download MLX models. So in this video, we're going to cover these two. One, the paper, the second one, the MLX model. Let's get started. The first one is the paper. The paper is called LLM in a flash. Efficient language model, large language model inference with limited memory. So when you see this paper, immediately you would know that this paper kind of alludes to the fact to use flash memory. And if you're not very familiar with this entire setup, so in a typical computer, you have got DRAM or just RAM and you have got the flash memory, which is, let's say that sits outside of the RAM and uh, a flash memory is like a fancy way of having a chip embedded uh, SSD or uh, let's say storage. So typically in a computer, you have primary and secondary memory, but that secondary memory, imagine it's part of the unified memory architecture. So technically flash memory offers significantly higher capacity, but suffers from a lower bandwidth like you can see. And that is where people typically use DRAM. And that is one of the things that they're highlighting in this paper. What they're saying is instead of moving all the model weights to the DRAM, which is now going to be the bottleneck for large size models, because you need to move all the model weights into the DRAM. And if your DRAM is limited, now is the time to call out Apple because Apple, even though their laptops are called Apple MacBook Pro, like professional, it starts with eight GB RAM, which is so bad, but you know, Apple wants to make it up with a paper like this. Anyways, so Apple says that when you have a limited DRAM capacity, you have a different way to run the model without moving the large language model, like all the weights into the D. So that is where what Apple has made a huge contribution with this particular paper is that you can run large language models efficiently that exceeds the available DRAM by storing the model parameters on flash memory and bringing them on demand DRAM. So if you're, if you're familiar with like paging concept in memory, it's very similar thing that they're doing with model weights. So instead of moving the entire model weight into DRAM, they're going to keep some part of it in DRAM and some part of it in flash memory. And they're going to move it very efficiently. And for that, they are introducing two important techniques. One is called windowing and the second one is called row column bundling. These two techniques of windowing and row column binding actually make this machine like Apple's whatever machine that they have got Apple Silicon machine with limited DRAM and with let's say a good amount of flash memory enables these machines to run large language models that are larger and bigger than their DRAM capability itself. And they're saying that this will let you uh, run the model twice the size of the available DRAM, which means like if you have got an eight GB DRAM, then it should ideally let you run a model that would require 16 GB DRAM. And also they're saying that there is a four to five times and 20 to 25 times increase in the inference speed, which is like in large language model context. If you're trying to send a text and then get a text output back, this is the inference speed. So it's, it says that you will get a four to five times increase in the speed of inference when you compare it with, let's say CPU and GPU. So four to five times in CPU, 20 to 25 times in GPU respectively. And this has a lot of interesting details about it. Like you can go read the paper. It talks about um, how do you do, uh, for example, what they're doing. It talks about sparsity. It talks about like the feed forward neural network uh, network in the deep neural networks, which is one of the important components that get replaced in the mixtural um, MOE, mixture of experts. 
So it's a very interesting paper if you want to see. They have got a bunch of benchmarks that will actually tell you how much increase in the speed that they're getting. So while this is all available there, this is still not a code. This is just a paper. The code is not available. But there has been a lot of speculation that this would ideally translate to a fact that you would be able to successfully run local models on MacBook, on iPad, on iPhone. And that could be actually revolutionary because people use iPhone for all sort of things like photography, videography and a bunch of other things. Imagine a world where you don't have to pay subscription costs to all these like big giants and you can run and fine tune models locally on whatever computer that you have got. I mean, like, of course, you have to be rich enough to buy an Apple MacBook, which like the place I come from is like a privilege. And uh, this is a very good time to also say that I've ordered an M3 Max, um, still not like 100 GB or anything uh, like a smaller RAM. And I'm still looking forward to see the laptop coming in another two weeks. That makes me switch this topic into another interesting topic, which is MLX. I've already told about MLX on this channel, like in one of the news videos, but MLX is an array framework uh, for machine learning on Apple Silicon. So if you're familiar with JAX, all the other things, MLX is like one of those things. It's going to make array framework or it's going to make array computation faster. And that is what is at the end of the day happening within deep learning models and all the large language models that you're dealing with are deep learning models. So anything that can do this computation faster is going to make your large language model faster. Whether it is fine tuning, whether it is training, whether it is inference, everything is going to become faster. And that is where the community has started taking a huge advantage, especially if you see Avni. So Avni Hanum, uh, who is, I think probably he, yeah, he's working for Apple and you can actually see Avni almost every single day releasing a new model, like completely mind blowing. And you can see now Hugging Face has created an MLX community and you can go here and then see the amount of models that you have got. They've got Llama 2 7 billion chat 4 bit model. They've got Mistral 7 billion instruct 4 bit model. Quantization is available. The Zephyr 7 billion beta model is available. You have got like uh, uh, stable diffusion models coming up. And I saw another demo where you can actually see that there is a there is a whisper that is running at a very good speed and you have got a lot of these good models coming into the MLX uh, framework and that is making it much, much easier to run large language models natively locally on Mac machines powered by Apple Silicon. Like if you are one of those people like me still with an Intel uh, machine, maybe I'm thinking like it's time for us to buy an Apple Silicon just like I've ordered when Apple announced MLX. I was like, okay, this is going to be one of those frameworks. Not a lot of people are going to use. And it's not like Apple is trying to do something in AI now. They've got like core ML as a framework. A lot of attempts have been made. But I think with MLX, it seems like Apple has finally woken up and started contributing to open source. It's not like they've released a framework and forward. They have actually got somebody. I don't know if it is personal interest or if the person is doing it because they are employed with Apple, but it almost feels like this is not going to be like one of those things where Apple has forgotten after releasing a framework, but here actually they're putting active effort in releasing open models have got like the hub, uh, the community place where you can go download the model and start using like, for example, the five to four bit model and you have it and you can easily see how to run this model. It is so simple to download the model and run it. At this point, I don't have an Apple Silicon to show, but hopefully God willing in another two weeks, I'll be able to do a demo, a brief tutorial of MLX. I'm looking forward to it. So anyways, I'm happy that Apple has woken up. The competition is always good, especially with a privacy first local open models. I'm looking forward to try out all these things. Let me know what do you think about Apple and see you in another video. Happy prompting.